Welcome to the 21st Creature Fridays video, where we're going to take a look at Lucinia megarhynchus, or the Nightingale. If you're new here, my name's Emily, and I'm a zoologist with experience in a range of different types of work, and a really big passion for bringing free educational videos about nature to you. It's great to have you here, and I'm always ready in the comments below to answer any questions you have on the topics that we cover in these videos. Nightingales are one of the best known singing birds in the UK, and their song has inspired many poets throughout the years. In fact, William Wordsworth is a famous English poet born in the late 1700s, and one of his poems was titled, O Nightingale, Thou Surely Art. This poem is a great example of a poet being captivated by the beauty of nature, while also being accurate to the species that they're writing about. O Nightingale, thou surely art a creature of a fiery heart. These notes of thing, they pierce and pierce, tumultuous harmony and fierce. These lines capture the strong song of male nightingales. They arrive in the UK in April and sing throughout the day and night until they migrate back to their West African overwintering grounds in September. Thou sinks as if the god of wine had helped thee to a valentine. The irony of this line is that the nightingale isn't singing out of joy of finding his valentine. In fact, it is only the males who haven't yet found a mate who continue to sing. A song in mockery and despite of shades and dews and silent night, and steady bliss and all the loves now sleeping in these peaceful groves. Wordsworth's poem captures the loneliness of this male, singing despite the otherwise still and quiet night. The nightingales that have already found their mates are nesting on the ground within dense shrub, keeping quiet as they protect their offspring. The female will incubate her five eggs alone, but both parents are involved in feeding the chicks that hatch out. Although the melancholic feeling of a lonely nightingale is traditionally captured in poems, some poets are inspired by nightingales to reflect on the joy of connecting with nature. In a volume jointly published with Wordsworth, Samuel Coldridge included a poem with the following lines. A melancholy bird, oh, idle thought, in nature there is nothing melancholy. And in reference to a child hearing the bird's song, he says, His childhood shall grow up, familiar with these songs, that with the night he may associate joy. The feelings of joy that the nightingale's song evokes is something that we are in danger of losing. Within 50 years, we have lost 90% of their population. Nightingales are a specialist of scrubby thickets. There needs to be enough woodland cover for them to be safe enough to nest, but not so much that the trees outcompete the ground layer and leave it too exposed. Overbrowsing by deer, a reduction in effective woodland management, lost habitats due to urbanization, and threats in their overwintering ranges are all contributing to this population reduction. With the right style of woodland management, there is evidence that populations can improve and that we can continue to hear the nightingale's song. But would you recognize one if you spotted it? Despite their distinctive song, they actually have a rather unremarkable appearance. They are a plain, light brown bird with a whitish gray underside. They're around the size of a robin or a dunnock, but they don't have the red breast of a robin or the streaky markings of a dunnock. While nightingales are in the UK, they mostly feed on invertebrates like flies and beetles. This food source helps bulk up their chicks until they fledge and start to hunt for themselves 12 days after hatching. In autumn, just before they migrate away, they will also eat berries. If they survive the migration away and back again, the average nightingale will raise two broods of offspring before they pass away. If you want to support me in continuing to create these free educational videos, then check out my new Patreon page. I have five different monthly support tiers to choose from, ranging from just two pounds up to the higher tiers where you can vote for video topics, have your name credited at the end of each video, receive personalised art of any UK species, and get one-on-one -on -one consultation calls with me on any nature-related topic of your choice. Subscribe to Ferroforest to keep learning about UK nature.